It's your boy Mix Man B here live from the MNB Radio Studios for the MNB Radio Podcast. No topic is too big or too small. And on the phone lines right now, I want to welcome in. He's an actor, a filmmaker. You're going to see him in the new Tupac Shakur biopic, All Eyes on Me, which is in theaters this Friday. Actor Derek Worsley, how are you? Hey, what's going on, Mix Master? Hey, I'm doing pretty good, man. Thanks for I- uh, having me on the show. Not a problem, man. I appreciate you taking some time to talk to us a little bit and, uh, you know, talk about this new upcoming biopic, uh, the Tupac, highly acclaimed, all eyes on me. So we're going to talk about that a little bit. I'm going to talk about a little bit about your your acting career and share some Tupac memories. So are you down to do all that? Yes, sir. Let's get it in. All right. Yeah, all definitely. Right. So we'll jump right into this. The Tupac movie It's coming out this Friday in theaters worldwide, yep, yep. all eyes on me. It's uh, the Tupac biopic, and you play a, a huge role in that movie. Um, without giving away well, the movie, but kind of, you know, tell us who, who you are and what you play in that movie. Well, so um, I was cast, I auditioned, I cast for, uh, without giving away too much information, one of the um, lead Black Panthers in the film. Uh, and I, it's not too big of a role, but like I, explain when I um, auditioned for it, I was just blessed to be a part of the film, you know, just to be in the presence of some of the great people who lived amongst uh, Tupac and uh, know him dearly, you know, and, and just hearing the stories on set. Um, so basically, um, I'm one of the key Black Panthers, and we shoot this very powerful scene uh, that that's going to, you know, capture the hearts and minds of everyone. Uh, and And so... I just can't wait for you guys to see it. I mean, it's going to be very powerful. So, I mean, a lot of people claim to know the whole life story of Tupac Shakur. Um, Again, not trying to give away too much of the movie, but like, do you feel people are going to be surprised when they see this movie? Like, there's going to be things that they're going to say, wow, I didn't really know that. Or are they going to watch this movie and be like, oh, I knew all this? No, most definitely there's going to be some key elements of the film that that you're going to realize, wow, I didn't know that. I didn't know he was dealing with so much or I didn't know that he went through this or, you know, I didn't know he was in this situation. Uh, I mean, the, the, the folks that, that, that pretty much presented this information did an outstanding job on, 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 you know, guiding the film and making sure some of the key aspects of his life that people didn't know about their untold story was, uh, was put out and it was, it was great. It's going to be, it's going to move everyone. Now, a lot of people claim that the whole rivalry, the East Coast, West Coast, Bad Boy, Death Row, you know, Notorious B.I.G., Tupac, all this rivalry was all fabricated by media, by people. And a lot of people that I've spoken to have said, you know, you know, Pac and Big, they really didn't, like, they had their differences and everything, but it probably could have been, uh, I guess, smothered and kind of like, you know, wiped clean, but... um. It kind of got out of hand. So do, do you think that uh, society and people had like a lot more influence in that beef than what it really was? Or was it really, you know, a real hardcore beef? So what I, what I know now, I, I think that, you know, society definitely played a part in it. You know, the media played a part in it. But I do think it was some, some situations that occurred that there were some real life moments that took place. And um, and and that's that's some of the things that's going to come out. That's why everybody needs to make sure they're in the theaters to see this because um, a lot of things happen behind the scenes that people just don't know about. You know, all we knew was what was going on in the media, and you know, seeing the things on the news, seeing the things on you know, back in the videos where they're beefing and um, you know, going at each other's throat. Um, you'll be quite surprised. You're going to be quite surprised to find out how everything you know panned out. I know, you know, most people saw the trailers in which most people know they were good friends in the beginning. So, I, you know, you got to tune in and, and, and make sure that you, you're in the theaters on Friday to see this because it's going to be told. You're going to have a clear vision on what happened with Pac and Biggie and, and you know, how that, how that relationship ended. Now, who are some of the key people that were on set that um, actually knew Pac personally that you got to interact with? 
Uh, interacted with, uh, I mean, Demetrius Shipp his, himself, his father was a producer of one of his songs, you know. He produced, uh, I think it was Toss It Up. Uh, so he was there. Uh, Tupac's mom was on set um, before she passed away. Um, and it didn't really get too much closer than that. A couple of the outlaw guys was on set. Um, every They brought in... Everyone in New uh, Pot, they brought them in to make sure that this this film, director Benny Boom, producer L.T. Holter, they brought these guys in to make sure that they were putting out the right story. Mm -hmm. Making sure it was accurate as possible, had that, right. you know, that is authentic. Um, right, now, very authentic. Now, when you saw the opportunity to do this, I mean, obviously you had to be a big Pac fan, like as most of us were. Um, what, are right. some of, what are some of the... Uh, songs and moments and memories of Pac that you just, you know, because I know I get hype as hell when I hear yeah, a Pac I song so on the many. radio. I, I got so many. I mean, when he came out with, you know, the disc record, the biggie, you know, when he came out with uh, Toss It Up, you know, California Love. I mean, I was, I I used to, you know, we used to call ourselves the outlaws. I mean, I used to hang around, you know, five of the friends of mine. We thought we were Tupac and Outlaws, you know. So, I mean, we do, Tup I still listen to Tupac music to this day right now on the highway. I mean, so Tupac was very, he had a very uh, big influence on my on my life and the way I see saw things. And, and, the, and you know, I lived through that period where Tupac, you know, he, he, he was, like I would tell many people, he was beyond his time. Like, he was way ahead of us. And, you know, some of the things that he talked about now, we can see happening today. Mm-hmm. That's one of the great things about Pac that I always admired is that how smart the guy was. Like the guy just, you know, he just, he talked about life in a in a way that made some people look at him like this guy's crazy, you know, like he's talking he's talking nonsense. But when you stop and realize what he was actually preaching, like it made so much sense, and it's making so much sense now, all these years later after his passing. And uh, oh, I guess. I guess one of the things I want to know is, I mean, you, you, you've been in acting, you've done other acting roles and everything, um, whether it was Tupac or anybody else, what influenced you to get into acting? Well, honestly, um, I've been, I've felt, you know, I've been an entertainer all my life. Back in the day, I used to dance in a group with my brother. So uh, we were doing talent shows and stuff like that. Um, so me, at being, I look at it from an entertainment standpoint. I like, um, the social work of it, of making people feel happy, of playing roles that, you know, portray things or situations that could, you know, influence people or, you know, show people what it's really like, you know, to be in that in that situation and give genuine social work for me. It's not for me. I look at it as it's my gift to give back. So that's why I'm, I'm into it. You know, that's why I love the art you know, of acting because I can be one day I can be a police. The next day I can be, you know, a homeless man on the street. The next day I can be, you know, a, a black Panther playing in a Tupac film, interacting with real life black Panthers in the scene, you know? So it's very, it's, 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 it's a very powerful thing. Very powerful too. I call it the, the power of the actor, the art of the actor. Mm -hmm. Now, did you go to school for any kind of formal training for that? Or like, how did this, uh, or did you just wake up and was like, you know what? I just got the, the gift to do it well when i um when i initially started out it was just one of those things where you know i was sought out and um casting director told me to come by his office and and so he said when you come by your office bring a couple of pictures with you and i was like okay so i went by his office and so he submitted me to uh, other casting directors uh online and uh so when he submitted me to the other casting directors they came back say, hey, we want to book it for Tyler Perry. We want to book it for ABC Nashville. We want to book it from USA Satisfaction. So I automatically had three jobs. He's like, look, let me tell you something. You got, you got a chance. He said because n normally, you know, we would, yeah, we would probably get one or two bookings, but you've got three solid bookings. So immediately when I took the the Nashville job, I mean, on set, I went on set, uh, Cali Corey. Uh, creator, producer, director, and I was playing the role of a cop. She said, you're hired, reoccur. Um, by the way, here are your lines. So I was automatically brought into the union from that job, from that day forward. You know, it's, everything has been uh, 
downhill effect. And I just been, you know, going at it, but yeah, uh, to answer the question, um, it was a period where I had to go through formal training. I, I took, you know, acting classes on, or, you know, uh, and I work with an acting coach now every week, Jeff Meeks out in uh, LA. He's been in the game for about 45 years. So I've, I've, he takes me through everything that I need to go through. He's, he's brought out the, any, any, from, any range from the high range to the low range to where he's had me doing the primal moaning. So, you know, um, yeah, you have to definitely, once you're in, you have to definitely master your craft. That's in anything that you do. Mm -hmm. Now, where are you originally from? I'm originally, I'm an army brat. So I'm originally from, I was born in Tarboro, North Carolina, but I traveled throughout, you know, throughout all over the world because my father was in the military. Yeah. So now coming from right uh, now, a military background, did you, uh, do you find it harder to be able to express yourself in different artistic ways, like doing acting and, or were you pretty much, you know, given the no, free will I to just, just go for your dreams? No, I think you, you become, because being in a military background, you're around so many different people and you pick up so many different, you know, different traits from other folks, you know, from the way you talk, you know, one minute you're living in, you know, New York, so your your accent changes. Next minute you're living in the South, so your accent change. Uh, or you're living overseas. Um, I mean, so you be you you are, you're actually living that life to where you you become flexible and you become uh, a a well uh, you know balanced person where you can do different things. True. We're talking to Derek Worsley. He's in the new Tupac biopic, All Eyes on Me, in theaters this Friday. Now, one of the cool things that Pac did he did is he inspired so many people, inspired so many young people. You see a lot of um, talent out there, music artists, actors, because Pac did a lot. He did poetry, he did you know movie, did music. Um, he was an activist, whether he embraced the role or not, um, encouraged a lot of people. Um, what is uh, something that you would say to any young minds out there that are trying to get into acting or music or anything that could possibly spark their interest to uh, keep achieving their goals? Well, I would tell you this, like I tell everybody, uh, achieve the unachievable. Don't quit, you know, because in, in this business of entertainment, one day you high, one day you low, you know. Um, and, and, and so if you really want to go out there, just master your art, you know, work on the technical stuff, you know, that, that's going to make you that much greater. And, you know, if you can't, if you can't join them, then beat them, you know, you know, so, you know, if you can't get just because you're going to get a lot of no's before you get a lot of yeses. Mm -hmm. So just because one casting director or one A&R tell, you know, keep going to the next one until you get that. Yes. All it takes is that one. Yes. And then you, then you're on fire, you know, so don't quit. Keep going. Uh, they're going to be tough days where you say, you know what, I just want to quit. Just go back to the drawing board, go back to the studio, go back to the voiceover room, whatever you do, and and just just start over again and and and, and rebalance and regroup and, and keep pressing. Now, a lot of people say that the hip hop game and music game has changed so much since the days of Biggie and Pac, and a lot of people will tell you that if Biggie and Pac were still around today, a lot of these rappers out there wouldn't be you know, doing their thing. Now, I mean, I know music is not your, your expertise. It's not the field you're really in, but um, what do you think is one of the key elements that is missing or an element from the music scene that you wish was still around today that would bring some of that classic music back? Well, well actually, I, I started, like I said, I started out dancing. I, I'm a big music guy. I just, you know, um, my life just took a different route, you know, um, but I think today, I think the older rappers have to figure out because we get older. So, you know, mm -hmm. even like I think I heard um, Neo say, you know, we got to figure out a way to interact in this new culture. Because not only in that, the independent world is so, so accessible with the new technologies. It's easier today to be independent. You wouldn't get any media attention back in the day because you had to be signed to a major label to get, you know, commercial ads, to get, you know, radio play. Today, you got YouTube, you got 
Instagram, you got Twitter, you got all these other Snapchat, you got all these other social platforms where, you know, you can, you can showcase your talent right in your living room. You can showcase your talent right on the move. So, um, I would, if Pac and Biggie were alive, of course, they, they're, they're legends. And uh, I'm pretty sure they would have figured out a way to, to exist in this world. But it's, the door is wide open for any artist out there that's, that's going to be, you know, that, that can be a next thing because all you have to do is put out good music. Yeah, I recently saw someone who was wearing a shirt that said, um, I, I still feel like 1990 was 10 years ago. <laughs> and it really stops and makes you think about it. It's like you always hear your parents and your grandparents talking about music. They're like, ah, oh, that music today is garbage. The music back in the day was so much better, so much better. And I kind of find myself now saying those same things where I'm like, man, like I really love old school hip hop. But there's a new wave, a new wave of talent that's out there. Who are some people that you're listening to right now that you're, you're really digging? I'll tell you, I'm 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 really listening to right now. I'm really listening to uh, Future. Uh, he's got me in the Migos. Uh, they stay hot and heavy on my playlist. I listen to Dave D's, a uh, guy from VH1, uh, Dave Naked. Uh, he's now um, doing music, so he has a hot song, "Jokes on You," that's out there on iTunes. Um, he has that real good, that classy uh, R&B tune. He kind of bring him back, but he's a new guy. But he's bringing a newer feel to it. So I listen to him. Um, half of the guy's name I, I barely can call out. Kodak Black, you know, uh, he's out there. Uh, There's a, it's a few of them that I, that I, that's kind of caught my attention. But like you stated, it's nothing like the old school music. Mm. But yeah, it's a it's a few that 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 stays heavy on my playlist. Now, one one of the other things that I thought was really interesting when I was looking at your uh, your Twitter bio it says professor. Now, yes. um, where are your professor at, and what do you uh, what do you teach and lecture? I teach uh, the logistics management classes for St. Leo University, and I teach uh, information technology at St. Leo University. Okay, uh, down in uh, Florida, so they have uh, remote locations all over the uh, all over the world. Uh, so yeah, I have uh, both uh, regular civilian and military students worldwide. Now a lot of them know they they know you're going to be in this new movie. Um, what did they say when they found out that you're going to be doing a movie well, about a lot Tupac? Of people, oh man, a lot of people got excited um, because it's an exciting thing to do. Uh, I told him, you know, like I told the uh, Benny Boom and LT, I was, I'll I'll sweep the floor in the movie. I just want to be a part <laughs> of this. I just want to be around the people yeah. that know Tupac. I want to meet his mom. You know, I just want to be in that presence because that presence was very powerful the entire time. I mean, like very powerful, like one of the most uh, most humbling things or most humbling film projects I've ever been a part of in my life. So, yeah, it was a, it was definitely a, a big deal. Yeah, definitely. And like I said, and, and to be able to just be like a sponge in that that situation and that that, that that environment and just kind of get so much wealth of yes, knowledge and just hear stories from people that you know surrounded themselves with pocket just getting all that yes, authentic sir. real stuff and not just stuff that you can you know check out on wikipedia is is, is priceless right, experience right. that you can't you can't you can't buy that on ebay you know what i mean you can't just you know go on pinterest and get that experience you know um not so the, the movie drops this Friday, June sixteenth. All eyes on me. All right, I'm gonna let you have this moment right now. If you had to pitch the idea, why should people go out there and see All Eyes on Me and and don't you see Cars three or what other Wonder <laughs> Woman, any other movie that's coming out? No, no diss to all those other movies. I'm sure they're gonna be great. But why sure. should people go see All Eyes on Me? Sell it to me. You guys been waiting for this for years. Everybody wanted to know Tupac Demons. You know, everybody wanted to know the good, the bad, the ugly, what happened, you know, with with him and Biggie. Um, everybody loves Tupac. You know, Benny Boom, L.T. Holton, and Morgan Creek Productions did an outstanding job putting this whole thing together. You should go out there and see it because you don't want to be the one to miss the story. You don't want to be the one that, that has to go back and go to Netflix later on when it comes out or buy it on Blu-ray DVD, but you don't want to miss this opportunity. You want to be right there in the moment. You want to be in the, in that moment when, when it 
hits that theater and you want to watch it for the first time as soon as it comes out, go get your tickets. I'll be doing um red carpet event premiere down in Atlanta with the cast and crew. I'll be tweeting live. I'll be snapping live and I'll be uh, showing you some of your favorite celebrities out there at that event. So be there, be active, and you don't want to miss it because it's Tupac and let's do what we're supposed to do. Let's represent and respect him, the legend, and and, and give him his just due that he deserves. That's what's up. And let everybody know where they can follow you at on Twitter and Snapchat so they can get all the details from the red carpet. You can, you can follow me. I'll be tweeting live. I'll be snapping live. I'll be live on Instagram at Life of D Worsley. L I F E D W O R S L E Y. Life of D Worsley. I'm on Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat. I'll be covering everything live. Make sure you tune in. Make sure you follow me. I'll follow back as well. Um, and let's let's have a great time this week. It's gonna be a good week. Definitely. So make sure you go get your tickets. Go see it this weekend, Friday. Even see it Saturday. You never know. You, you see it once, and then it's so good. You got to bring someone else along. Right. And Derek mentioned you mentioned about seeing it on Netflix and the DVD and Blu-ray. Hell, go get that too after it comes out, so you can have it and just own that yes, piece sir. of history for afterwards. Yes. All right, Derek. We it appreciate you taking America. some time talking to us a little bit, and we're going to be definitely checking that out on Friday. Checking out the Snapchat and all the other social media platforms and. uh it's just cool to be able to talk to you a little bit to talk about the experience of you know all eyes on me and uh we hope to uh hear and see more big things from you see more movies coming out yes sir